KXSF LP San Francisco 102.5 FM streaming at the World Wide Web at KXSF.FM. This is a live session. We are blessed and honored and uh, excited to have in, the, in the, the studio with us the Alea Project. Rohan Krishnamurthy on, on uh, drums and Dingham and uh, the, the saxes of Prashant Radhakrishnan as well as keys and accordion, Mr. Colin Hogue. Hogan, sorry. And uh, thank you guys for coming through. I'm going to put up the mics and just you can say hi to the radio radio folks. It's great to be here. Yeah, great to be here. Thank, thank you all for, 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 for coming through. We've, you've had an amazing year, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's been an amazing year. Uh, finally, things opening up, uh, you know, after the pandemic. And uh, yeah, we have a debut album out, uh, also called The Alea Project, that we just, uh, I think, went through about nine shows this fall here in the Bay. This is our 10th event, I believe, this this fall, uh, last event of the year. So yeah, really happy to be here, Bob. Thank you, thank you for having us. And it's just a blessing to finally be able to play, you know, live shows again with uh, Prashant and Colin and, and um, you know, to see wonderful audiences, you know, at the venues again. Well, thank you guys. And uh, maybe we can start with the song and uh, we'll get into, the more details of who the Alea project is. Yeah, yeah let's do it. Yeah. What are we going to hear first, gentlemen? Uh, this is going to be an Alea original called Changing Pies.
Wow, amazing. Thank you, guys. That was really incredible. That was the Alea Project here on KXSF Live in the studio. The Alea Project, Rohan Krishnamurthy on uh, drums and Merdingham, Merdungam. I'm sorry. Yeah. Did I say that right? Yep, Merdungam. Okay. Yep. Merdungam. Yeah. And uh, uh, Prashant Radnakrishnan on saxes, Colin Hogan uh, on keys and accordion. Uh, an incredible trio band that's that's come together through years of, of association um, tell us a little bit about the band the origin how you guys came together what and what does Alea mean yeah so the Alea project um, is something that officially came together in 2017 but um, the the seeds of, of this group really go back decades so Prashant and I have actually been playing together for over 25 years, if you can believe that. We actually met in middle school. Um, he grew up in Phoenix, I grew up in Michigan, Kalamazoo, Michigan, and we uh, sort of connected at different music festivals. I've been playing together since then. I've known you know, Colin since I kind of moved to the Bay about a decade ago. So uh, these ideas, you know, um, the Alea Project is very much about exploring the intersections of um, Indian classical music, especially the Carnatic style of uh, Indian classical music with uh, contemporary jazz and funk. So uh, these kind of explorations have been going on for, for a very long time in our heads, independently and collectively. Um, but it was only in 2017 that we actually came together as a group. So, uh, you know, the, the funny story is that we were uh, first asked to play uh, at the uh, 50th anniversary uh, tribute concert of the Sgt. Pepper's album, the Beatles album. Um, this was an uh, incredible festival by Undercover Presents um, at UC Theater. And uh, Liz Luke, you know, who was running the festival at the time, she contacted me and said, hey, can you do a cover of uh, Being for the Benefit of Mr. Kite, uh, this quirky tune at the end of the album. So I immediately thought, okay, you know, this is an interesting challenge. So uh, I hit up uh, Prashant and Colin. I said, okay, we can maybe try doing, you know, giving, giving this our own, our own take, our own flavor. Um, so that was actually the first time we came together as the Alea Project. But we've been playing in, uh, together in different capacities for, uh, as I mentioned, actually over uh, a decade or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Alea, by the way, uh, actually means um, timeless and uh, and permanent. So it's kind of a play off of the word Lea. So Lea uh, is a common word that's used in, in Indian music to mean sort of rhythm, and it has these connotations of sort of this universal, constant, you know, permanence. But um, I actually you know, hit up one of my friends who's a Sanskrit uh, scholar and professor, and I asked him what what does Lea actually mean, and he said Lea actually means impermanence and uh, and timelessness you know time you know something that's uh, dissolves in time so dissolution uh, so it's just the opposite of what we thought uh, you know Leia meant you know and uh, so oh, Leia is just the opposite of that which is something that's permanent uh, and timeless yeah. beautiful um, it's, it's, really, a, it's, a, it's a Sanskrit word mm -hmm. yeah. well it's really um, interesting that you chose changing fives to begin and a really interesting uh, history, lots of interesting time changes in there, yeah. and 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 perhaps a reference to the Dave Brubeck turn taking fives. Absolutely. And I know we've talked about this yeah. in the past about really an interesting connection there of Indian music, totally, and how that that tune developed. Was there an inspiration there? Absolutely. So uh, obviously, Take Five is you know kind of one of the most well-known you know, sort of jazz tunes today, and that was um, definitely an inspiration. But not just the music and the, and the piece itself, but um, also, this kind of hidden history uh, behind the piece. So it turns out back in 1958, the, uh, the Brubeck band made it out to India um, on this sort of cultural diplomacy tour during the height of the Cold War. And um, they actually met up with my uh, Indian percussion guru's guru. His name is Pirani Subramania Pillai, one of the legends of, of uh, Carnatic percussion of the 20th century. And they had this you know, very early kind of Indo-jazz uh, jam session. Uh, there's a recording, there's some photos from that. So, um, so that kind of early collaboration exchange was definitely a, a big inspiration for, for this piece. And it said that perhaps he learned that 5-4 that, uh, time signature there. Yeah, from some of my from yeah, teachers, teachers' compositions. Yeah, like the da-da-da-da-da-da. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of these compositions. Da -dum, da -dum, da -da -da -dum, da -dum. He has a lot of these rhythmic compositions that have that very kind of signature. So, yeah. yeah. So I was curious. Um, Prashant, you, you guys have worked together for over 25 years. I yeah. mean, the band has come together, but you guys are, are long-standing collaborators. Yeah. Um, yes. Tell me a little bit about your feelings of, of, of creating this kind of fusion music. I mean, you've collaborated in traditional settings and in uh, Kathak dance and, and classical forms. Tell That's right, little, yeah. Tell me a little bit about sort of making this fusion for you. 
Well, for me, it, it's something that started um, back as long as maybe 20 years ago. I started hearing my first pieces that combined Indian classical and jazz. Mm -hmm. um, and that just continued on. I had a few different ensembles uh, which shared that kind of music. Mm -hmm. And then Rohan moved to the Bay Area. Uh, we had been playing since we were kids, like you said. Yeah. And we would play off and on whenever we had the opportunity. After moving to the Bay Area, we were both in the same area, so we actually got to start playing together more. And this is a great opportunity to bring that kind of music, which combines so many different influences, because some of the stuff I did earlier was more just Indian classical and jazz. But over here, Rohan's bringing a lot of different influences as well to mix in with that, like funk. And Colin's bringing a whole other fresh flavor with so many different uh, yeah. of his own compositions. Yeah. Well, it's an incredible crew, and the album of the Alea Project is out, and y'all should go check it out and, and stream it, buy it, you know, support it. Um, beautiful work. All Thank you. Thank, thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks so much, Alvin. You know, one thing I you know really like to emphasize is that um, the, you know, the Alea Project is very much a, a collective. It's in a very much an ensemble sound. So. You know, many times when we when we write pieces for the group, um, I often think of kind of creating these like structures of improvisation. You know, mm -hmm. what are these sort of like um, launching pads for you know for Prashant, for Colin, for us as a group to actually explore our creativity and to bring our unique sound you know and approach to the music. So uh, instead of thinking of it as a kind of a hierarchical, you know, here's the tune, just play it. It very much how can we bring out that uh, collective uh, sense of improvisation and um, and creativity to the music. So uh, these are you know, artists who I uh, completely trust you know, artistically. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's uh, just a pleasure you know, to play with them and in so many different settings. And again, very, very thankful uh, to have had so many opportunities to play uh, in the Bay this fall and uh, a lot more coming up next year, too. Right on. Well, um, Colin, I mean, it's really interesting to me. I, what, a, what a beautiful setting. And I don't know if you, one of the things that unifies it seems that unifies Indian music and jazz music is that improvisation and uh, just uh, yeah, yeah absolutely. You, you guys are amazing improvisers I've heard you in various settings and thank you. you know thank uh, you thanks yeah no it, that's definitely fun to, to have that I was thinking about um, my, my own roots with this music so I, I um, so my, my parents actually traveled to India back in the 70s. My dad uh, studied uh, Indian tabla drums and still plays to this day. My mom studied some Indian dance. And, and so I grew up um, hearing a lot of that music and my dad showing me some of these really cool, interesting, uh, you know, odd metered rhythms and all this stuff from very early age. So that was kind of informing my musical identity early on. And then definitely heard a lot of the fusion stuff with like John McLaughlin, what he was doing with like Shakti and Mahavishnu Orchestra. And then another one, and going back to what you were saying about improvising, especially having this freedom to really stretch out and explore. Um, one of my biggest musical heroes of all time, John Coltrane, was was very influenced by, by Indian music as well. And I think really took that idea of like, okay, we're just going to open things all the way up and just, you know, give all this space and time to really explore and everything. And so um, I, you know, fell in love with his, his music and his approach. And then when I came into this project, realized, oh, this is a great opportunity to kind of explore in that way as well. So great. Well, thank you. I should take a minute because we are on a public radio station and I should, uh, support uh, or you know acknowledge one underwriter and sorry here we go hey cakes is that the listeners and Bayview neighbors yeah. lucky grocery store is moving yeah, into the neighborhood with everything you love okay. all in one place from local products okay. to everyday uh, items at prices yeah, you need. Check out the grand opening of your new lucky yeah. store today at Bayview uh, Plaza, uh, the corner of 3rd Street in Evans. Cakes Except would like to thank Lucky Grocery Store for their support. Well, we're back, and we are KXSF, LP San Francisco, the live sessions with the Alea Project. Rohan Krishnamurthy, Prashant Radhakrishnan, and keyboardist, accordionist Colin Hogan. Amazing music. What are you, what are you guys going to play for us now? Thanks a lot, Bob. Uh, so, uh, you know, in our live sets, I, I usually joke when I intro the piece, I, I say, now, and now for something completely different. I, uh, I keep saying that because there's, there's so much variety and diversity in what we do. So, uh, this is a piece called New Nuevo. Uh, Colin, you want to say a few words about Nuevo? 
Yeah. Sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so this is um, this is a tune that I brought in original of mine. Um, so the uh, when I f what made me first fall in love with the accordion as an instrument uh, was actually hearing someone that I later found out was not actually playing the accordion, was actually playing another in a similar instrument called the bandoneon, uh, which is the primary instrument used in tango music. So I, um, in high, back in high school, um, got a, an album of Yo-Yo Ma doing all of Piazzolla's music and just absolutely fell in love with all of that. And then um, since then, I played a lot of that style and had a group for a long time that, I, that we did a lot of that sort of thing. And so, um, yeah, always loved that, that style. Um, and then I had this kind of idea in the back of my mind, and when Rohan said, oh, it'd be great to you know, bring in some fresh ideas, I uh, pulled this out and kind of dusted it off and, and uh, added a couple elements that remind me a little bit of some Indian rhythms, some of these kind of repetitive rhythms that kind of work over the bar line and some sort of things like that. And so, um, yeah, so you'll hear something that's got, definitely got some tango influence, a little bit of Indian influence in there as well, definitely some jazz. So, uh, yeah, kind of a very Alea type of sound here. This is the Alea Project, live in session at KXSF, New Nuevo. Ooh. That was the accordion hitting was, the mic. Yeah, exactly. Welcome to hearing the accordion. Here we are, live radio, and uh, again, blessed and honored to have the Alea Project live in session. So, you know, everyone in the band, you know, is doing multiple things we're all wearing multiple hats here you know i'm i'm obviously playing drums i'm playing you know carnotic percussion and, right. and, and uh, colin's doing you know piano keys accordion so uh the thing with you know with colin is that uh, he's juggling a bunch of instruments but he's actually also a juggler like a literally Literal. a juggler so ah you know that's the only yeah where's great for radio, yeah, great great for radio. radio but you know, you know. We are, we, it'll be on YouTube, so if you want to toss yeah. the accordion in the air at some point, feel free. It's, it's the only thing he's not doing in the group. So. <laughs> soon, soon, though. All right, I think we're, we're
Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Thank you, guys. That was New Nuevo, written by Colin, yeah? Excellent. Really, Colin Hogan on, on uh, keys and accordion there. Um, amazing, amazing track. And I love Astor Piazzolla, I have to say. I, you know, I share, I share that love. Um, and I didn't expect to hear him in the setting, you know, originally <laughs> thinking about the music and, and just so beautiful. Um, so um, I really wanted to highlight too the amazing sort of hybrid drum kit that you have, and, Rohan, and yeah. kind of the the process of creating that. I mean, there's a lot of traditional instruments that you bring into this into a jazz kit. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, what I'm playing here is you know is a combination of uh, a standard drum set uh, with all, you know the cymbals, snare, uh, bass drum, along with the uh, redundant, which you know if you can see this on Insta Live or hopefully on the YouTube channel a little bit later on, you'll see you know, where oftentimes the scenario is I have a little dum which is a two-sided pitched hand drum, a carnotic drum. Um, and I also, uh, depending on the show, bring in uh, a ganjiro, which is like a frame drum, uh, maybe a gunnum, uh, which is a clay hand drum, and, and also the vocal percussion. So, you know, a lot of the idea of the hybrid kit, um, you know, is really about bridging these different uh, percussive worlds and traditions, um, and also more broadly, the whole concept of hand drumming and stick drumming. So a lot of times, you know, we, you know, when when you learn an instrument, uh, any kind of tradition, you you kind of learn also these these kind of dichotomies. You know, you know, you have hand drumming is stick drumming. You have you know, you know, you have uh, harmony, you have melody. You have all these different sort of like di dichotomies that that uh, you sometimes you know only later on realize that you know maybe you can kind of deconstruct some of it. So. I was always interested in seeing how can you bring these different elements together. Um, and especially sort of in college, I, I sort of realized that the drum set as an instrument was really kind of, kind of like a microcosm of American society, right? So every aspect of the drum set comes from somewhere other than America, right? So that you have, you know, the, uh, the uh, snare, the, the bass drum coming from like, the European, you know, marching band tradition, you know, the cymbals coming from Turkey, from the Middle East, you have, you know, the you have the bass drum pedal coming from Germany. You know, you have the, the toms coming from uh, Native American traditions or Chinese traditions. But it was only in America that, that we found a way to bring all of these things together and to play them uh, in a harmoniously together as one. So, so that was a really kind of deep you know, concept to me. How can, we, how can we bring these elements together? And, and where does you know, carnotic percussion, Indian percussion, how, how can that fit and, and, and be part of this uh, harmonious kind of a drum set in, the, in this percussion world. So uh, it was a very long process. I, I didn't wake up one morning and decide, okay, this is how, how we're gonna do it. Um, it took a lot of time. And a lot of my uh, development actually happened at the, uh, the jazz school, California Jazz Conservatory in Berkeley. Uh, I studied with uh, uh, Alan Hall, a wonderful drum, drummer and educator there. So uh, over the course of many years, you know, we kind of developed it. And, and now I sort of have a very flexible setup. So depending on on the on the performance, depending on the artist, depending on the venue, there there are different ways of putting it together. Um, you can choose the instruments and the approach accordingly. Um, but yes, it's definitely been a it's been um, a really sort of creative challenge and journey uh, bringing all these worlds together. And, and for this project, for the Alea project in particular, I felt that I needed all of these instruments to, to really capture the sound that I had in my mind that, that was that was at the intersection of the Indian classical space, the, the jazz space, the funk space, you know, right. and, and to bring all these things together. And this sort of developed as you um, were learning the redung redungum yeah. and, and, and drums, and, drums and, drums and drums. gradually you know playing in jazz settings, playing in these settings. Yeah, playing in these different settings. And playing in traditional settings. Yeah, and realizing that, again, um, for me, you know, rhythm was always, you know, the one of the very few universals in in, 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 in the world, right? I mean, even in music, we talk about music as a universal language, but we, those of us who play music know that that's not necessarily the case. I mean, <laughs> there's all sorts of barriers with language, with tuning systems, with instruments, with you know, how melodies can see it. But rhythm is actually one of the few things that you actually have in every system of music. And um, 
So I always, you know, was interested in, you know, as 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 a drummer and percussionist, I was always interested in seeing the connections between genres. I mean, the, the differences are obvious, but it's like what what's connecting it? And rhythm was always that thing that I found was something that was connecting it. And um, and in the Layer Project, a lot of our music also uh, kind of builds on on the rhythmic uh, universality of uh, of music in these different styles. Well, um, how about another tune? Maybe uh, yeah. what's next? Um, can you tell, tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So, uh, Emerge? Yeah, yeah. So, we'll, um, we'll be playing actually a tune called Emerge, uh, which I wrote with a good, really good friend of mine who's also part of our Carnotic crossover community, Aditya Prakash, a, a wonderful singer, crossover uh, uh, artist in uh, Los Angeles. And um, this is the newest tune uh, for the Alea project. And this was something that uh, we wrote basically, you know, last year, right before we went into the studio, after like a year and a half of this. You know, paralysis, hibernation state during COVID. Finally, there was this window where you know we could we found a, a, a time where we could go into the studio, you know, record together, be together, and it was really kind of like a, a celebration. It didn't feel like a recording session; it felt like a celebration. You know, of us coming together and finally being, being able to do this. It took almost two years to find that date. You know, where we all come together. So, uh, so this tune emerged kind of captures that. Um, that feeling of, you know, just the, not necessarily post-pandemic, but, you know, being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel and being able to finally come back and to be able, you know, having the optimism, you know, to take on the world again, to be, to be able to create art, to be able to share art. So, uh, and this is a tune that uh, really is, is also inspired by uh, one of our collective influences, Shakti, um, and kind of uses some of the, some of the textures and the, uh, and the energy of that uh, uh, sort of jazz funk super group. Great. Well, again, this is KXSF Live. You are listening to the Alea Project, Rohan Krishnamurthy, Prasant Radhanakrishnan, and Colin Hogan. And this is the tune, Emerge. Tajum, takkajunatum, takkajunatum, takkajunatum. Thank you. 
Thank you. It's a Thank small you. audience, but excited. And what an amazing tune. So that is Emerge. Emerge, yeah. The Alea Project here live on KXSF. And um, you emerged and out of the pandemic and created this amazing album. Uh, I hear tell it was a one-day session. <laughs> oh, why? That's wild. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think I, I mean, looking back, it, was, it might have been actually madness to think that <laughs> we could do that. But... Um, it was just, you know, the energy was, was something else. And again, I have, you know, a thousand percent trust, you know, in Prashant and, and Colin as, as artists. So, you know, um, I we just kind of went in with this with this energy that, yeah, you know, let's 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 record, let's play as much as we can. And, and you know, we already played a lot of these scenes in 2019. And you know, right before the pandemic, we, we um, played quite a few of the uh, sort of uh, jazz and, and global music uh, circuit in the Bay. And um, so we already, you know, had a good feeling for the tunes. And um, I, my idea, you know, when going to the recording sessions, that we would just play through each tune, you know, three or four times each, and um, with minimal edits and retakes. And again, looking back, it was probably madness. But um, but it, that's what happened. It was a exactly. gor it's a gorgeous output. I mean, Absolutely, yeah. Amazing album. Yeah. I mean, I, I keep listening to it, and I just keep thinking about, you know. Um, it's all, in some ways, you know, actually our, our recording engineer, uh, Neil Godboy, uh, we recorded at Airship uh, Laboratories in Richmond, um, he's a good friend, good friend of the group, and he was just saying it's almost like a lost art, you know, going into the studio and, and doing this, you know, playing the whole tune, you know, three or four times, and then, you know, then going into the, you know, into the room and, and deciding, okay, what's the best take? I mean, it's, nowadays, so much of it's just stitching together, you know, one second, two second clips, and, you know, and auto-tuning and everything, but we're, you know, um, it was just yeah. I was just gonna say yeah. True. I think I feel like that's that is something that's very much brings in that that jazz element of like especially that kind of that traditional jazz thing where it was all about you know you'd hone your craft on stage and just playing night in and night out. So when it came to the studio, you just everyone got in there and just hit record and went for it. And totally. So, yeah, I think that was really fun. And, and yeah, like you said, it was it was a crazy day, but I felt like we all just brought this energy of knowing like okay, we're just gonna go in there and hit record and just let it all you know let it all come out. So. Right. I think we spent 16 hours or something in the studio. Hours, yeah. It was most most of the day, but um, yeah, and, and you know, again, the I remember we started with the hardest tunes. So you know, instead of kind of warming up, I I knew that you know once we go there, like we set up the, the night before, and then you know it's just okay, let's start with changing fives and <laughs> let's run it, you know. And, and um, yeah, it was just it was just a celebration and, and just a momentous time for us to to come together. Wonderful. Well, you guys also have. Um, getting really successful lots of gigs uh, you know 10 gigs plus over the last and and some great press attention grammy grammy nods nomination all that kind of stuff and yeah you know, very, in the yeah. in the mix oh, absolutely just, you know, very very thankful and grateful for all of that and um you know i think uh, a lot of it you know ideally you want things to happen organically right yeah. so again there was no there was never this moment where I woke up one day and said, okay, we, I need the Alea project to come together, or I need to bridge the worlds of Indian classical and jazz. And it was not It was never like that. It was something that was percolating over many, many, many years. And um, and the music and the sound and the feel is only getting better and better. I, I always say, you know, we're this is where we are right now. It's always a work in progress. You know, the album represents where we, you know, were as a group, let's say, last, last summer when we were recorded. And, you know, it's hopefully getting better and better. We're always thinking of new tunes and, and trying to tweak it. I mean, these guys know every every show I come back with you know, ideas for the next show. Maybe we should try this, let's try that. You know, and we're always trying to tweak things and, and make things better. So, um, so you know, it's something we're really, really proud of. And, and um, you know, every time I go back to the album, it's just uh, there's a feeling of, of happiness that, wow, we could... We, you know, we were actually able to pull this off, you know, in, in the midst of this complete chaos and, and paralysis and, you know, all the ups and downs that we all faced you know, during the pandemic. Well, it, it really shows, I mean, both your long-standing relationships, 25 years between Prashant and Rohan, right. and, yeah. and you're in 10 years, just incredible, incredible work. Um, you, you guys, guys are got, got a bunch of stuff, maybe it's the moment to say, you could, you know, see these guys live come up, this is your last your last thing of the year, but you're going to be in January 7th at Mr. Tipple's Jazz Club and yep. a whole se series of great performances coming up. Yeah, yeah lots, lots of lots of coming up. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful fall um, and uh, yeah, lots, lots of incredible, memorable shows. You know, the Bay were just at the Black Hat Jazz Club last, last uh, week, literally a week ago. 
Um, yeah, yeah, Mr. Tipples, Tipples is coming up January 7th. Um, where, where is Mr. Tipples? I'll have to say. It's in San Francisco. It's in SF. Yeah, yeah, it's in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, okay. we're at the, that's the first Saturday of January. The last uh, Saturday of January 28th, we're at uh, the Center for New Music, also in SF. Um, and then, yeah, we have some, uh, at the moment, we have some stuff in the spring. And uh, I'm also, also happy to say we're going to be part of the uh, SF Jazz uh, Summer Fest. Excellent. In, um, June, so yeah. that's also coming June 15th, up. June fifteenth, June fifteenth, exactly. Yeah. So lots, lots of exciting. Get your tickets early. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, we're we're excited to, yeah, to share share our music um, uh, outside of the Bay next year as well. So we have some shows pub in New York. You were mentioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, we have we gotta yeah we gotta set the dates and all that. But uh, yeah, very thankful to to have some uh, exciting exciting invites for next year. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, thank you guys for coming through and spending the time. We still we still got plenty of time to chat and think. Uh, and some more music, but uh, I mean, I was wondering um, how you guys um, feel about the next steps. I mean, there's obviously performing this music now, and you've been performing it for a while. Are you starting to write again, thinking about that? Is that percolating, or you're just like, okay, we're gonna play the music, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'll speak for myself here, but um, it's. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really it's been a blessing this uh, this fall. You know, every, every time we meet, you know, for a show, I, I just tell you know tell Prashant and Collins like, wow, like this is the dream, right? Every week, like we're we're playing, you know, we're playing great gigs, new audiences, we're radio sessions, like we're playing in different spaces, and and um and just to, and to keep playing. I mean, we're obviously playing a lot of tunes from the album, and oftentimes our live shows also feature um, uh, collaborations uh, with other artists. Uh, uh, Rupa Mahadevan is a really good friend of, of all of ours and a wonderful chaotic and crossover singer. Um, so she's joined on many of our, our sets. So we have things that are unique to the live performances and we're also drawing about half of the rep from, from the album. But, you know, these are tunes that also feature a lot of improvisation. So every time we play, it's, it's different. It's a different. There's all sorts of elements that are unexpected, unplanned, spontaneous. Um, so to keep playing the music and to get deeper and deeper into it, um, is is a blessing really. Um, uh, a lot of a lot of new music. A lot of you know groups unfortunately play whatever once every four months, five months, six months, and that's a different kind of thing. Where you know every time you play it, it feels like a like a new piece. But um, I feel like we're really sinking our teeth into it now. And and um, I've actually one an audience member came up uh, to us uh, last week at Black Hat, and uh, he. Uh, he's, he's sort of been following following our, our story since 2019, and he told me he said, you know, I heard you guys back in 2019. Uh, I think at the jazz school we were playing, a jazz in the neighborhood, and uh, he said, yeah, you guys sounded great then, but he's like, you sound way better now. <laughs> and I said, wow, you know what? That's act, that's actually the best compliment you could give us. You know, if you just said if you know, saying the, the show was great doesn't do much for us. He's like, what would you like about it? And, and he said it's gotten better. He's like, you guys are tighter. It's like it's like the way you're going through the instruments, you know, and then the, and on the transitions are, are tighter. I was like. That's, that's really great to hear because, because that's, that's that's what we're striving for. It's always a work in progress, you know. It's never, it's never complete. So, uh, so, so we're, we're just starting, and yeah, we're you know we have lots lots of tunes uh, lined up, new 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 music for for next year, and um, the Elijah Project yeah. Two. The Elijah Project Two, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I was just gonna say, for me, that it's uh, having that that whole process has been so valuable for me because um, being the one with the least experience in traditional Indian music and Carnatic music. Um, coming more from the jazz element, you know, as much as I grew up listening to it, um, hadn't studied it very intently. So, so just getting this, getting to play this music so much and absorb it, I feel like I'm really learning so much from these guys and and learning how to, you know, express myself and take, kind of get a put a different lens on on my improvisation and learn how to, you know, use some of these really cool elements that come out of the traditional Indian. Uh, music as well right. kind of goes goes both ways as well i mean you know so, so much of what colin does it hap he does it so naturally i mean i don't i don't have to even tell him to do the way for example he's comping in this tune like uh, i remember someone the song it sounded like a carnatic violinist or something the way they would accompany a singer or something it's just so natural so tasteful so you know filling the space so beautifully so um so it's, yes it's wonderful to, to keep learning from each other excellent another tune gentlemen is there is there Something else we can hear? Yeah, of course. We, we have uh, we have too much music to share. So we'll, we'll, keep it, we'll, keep it, we'll keep it tight here. So um, next tune is going to be a um, uh, we'll, we'll draw something uh, from back back to the source uh, of Carnatic music. We'll, we'll take a traditional Indian classical piece, and um, a lot of the tunes that we you know that we're presenting and, and composing 
draw on some of these foundational aspects of Indian music, the concept of raga, uh, which is the whole melodic system of Indian music, and thala, which is the whole um, rhythmic system. So, um, so we're kind of bridging those worlds, all the, you know, raga is way more than a scale, it's like a living being, and we're trying to bring the essence of that into, into the music that we're doing. Um, so this is going to be a Carnatic uh, piece that uh, kind of gives you a sense of what, what the um, source material is like. Okay. And what's the name of this piece? Sean, you want to? Uh, this piece is called the Basu Devayani. Okay. It's composed by the saint composer of Tyagaraja, mm -hmm. who's uh, one of the most famous composers in South Indian classical music. And it's a very beautiful song. Uh, melody is very universal, uh, universally enjoyable. Uh, so. Well, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank 
was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, tell me again, uh, Prashant, the name of the tune. I, this... Say it one more time. I'm sorry. Uh, Vasudevayani. Vasu this was composed by Diagraja, one of the main composers, mm -hmm. kind of like we look at Beethoven, Mozart, yeah. Brahms. Yeah. And this was composed for a play. He actually composed for a a live play back oh, in those days. That okay. was something rare that he did. Usually he just... What, and and what era does this come from? This is 1700s. 1700s. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He's almost almost contemporaneous with with uh, you know, Mozart, Beethoven, mm. yeah. Bach. so it was, a, it was a good time for music. Yeah. <laughs> As is it is now with the Alea Project here live. <laughs> um, thank you guys for, for playing that. What a beautiful and amazing it's a pleasure. piece. Um, and so I want to take a second, have to play another spot. This is KXSF. And I uh, want to give some thanks to, uh, to this underwriter. And, uh, a quick kite. Yeah. Quick. For some people, a really tight kite. Underwriting for KXSF comes with Noise, a record shop located in the Richmond district between 39th and 40th Avenue, specializing in local bands, artists, and music producers. Contact them calling 415-702-6006 or email them at noisemusicsf at gmail.com. Thanks to Noise for supporting San Francisco Community Radio KXSF. <laughs> All right, we are back, and we are back live, KXSF LP San Francisco, 102.5 FM. This is the origin story song, is it not, guys? <laughs> yeah, being for, but for the benefit of Mr. Kite, so, you know, it's uh, an unlikely uh, origin, I guess, for, for the music that we're doing, but... In many ways, it, it represents the uh, kind of nexus of all these different genres, right? The challenge of, of finding the, the commonality and the connections between all these different genres. So, uh, of course, the Beatles had a lot of Indian music influences, as we all know, and Sgt. Pepper was a, was a milestone for, for a lot of that. Um, but this is a tune that was not, is not, you know, uh, very obviously influenced by any Indian music that I can tell. Um, but we, you know, we took the melody, we took the arrangement, and we did something completely different from it. And uh, it's, a, it's a tune that we're actually very, very proud of, and uh, usually a crowd pleaser because no one ever expects that in our set. <laughs> Excellent. The, Al the Alea Project here live at KXSF for the benefit of Mr. Kite. Right. <laughs>
and, uh, and, and playing music for us. This has Thank been you. the Alea Project. Rohan Krishnamurthy, Prashant Radnakrishnan, Colin Hogan. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Really thank appreciate you, gentlemen. It. Brilliant, you brilliant much. music. Check them out. And again, January 7th, Mr. Tipple's Jazz Club, and January 28th, the SF Center for New Music, the Alaya Project in the house. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks so much.